Good morning, guys. Or good night, depending on when you're watching this. My name is Simona, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that you can expect to do following a PhD, and also what I am planning on doing once I finish my PhD. Fingers crossed. I guess I was a little optimistic with my statement there when I said, when I finish my PhD, assuming I graduate. Just kidding. I, I will graduate. Mark my words. If I'm being so real, I've always seen myself as an academic. What inspired me to actually pursue STEM was my second year organic chemistry professor. He is my biggest inspiration, phenomenal teacher, and he inspired me to be a teacher myself. So ideally, I would love to be a lecturer, even at a college. So that was my plan before I enrolled in the PhD program. But honestly, the more I get into my PhD, the more I think that I might actually want to run a lab one day because I actually do really like doing research. I love the idea of asking new questions that have never been asked before and creating new knowledge. I think the opportunity to create knowledge is the coolest thing in the entire world. And that's what being a researcher allows you to do is create new knowledge. So you're an inventor. You're an artist. We're artists. So I don't know if I would be completely willing to give this up. Beyond the fact that I just want to teach, the life of a teaching professor seems very chill. They usually teach one to three classes, have a few office hours, and then they have TAs to mark all of their assignments and tests. So you really just have to show up, lecture, and talk to students which I think is the best thing in the world. So now another option is doing a bunch of postdocs. Usually before somebody will become a professor, they will have to do one to two postdocs anyways. And plus doing a postdoc can give you an opportunity to not only be involved in new innovative research, but travel the world. Right now in my research group, we have a postdoc from both Italy and from Spain. I think I would really love living in Europe. So I definitely want to capitalize on those opportunities while I'm still young and travel. So before I become a lecturer or an academic, if I get an opportunity, I definitely want to postdoc either way. And depending on the country you want to work in as well, I have heard that postdocs can actually make a pretty good salary. In Australia, for example, they make around $100,000 per year in Australian dollars, which is a lot. In Canada, I think the wage is a lot lower. It's around forty to $60,000 per year, and I'm not too sure what they make in the States. But as an academic myself, I feel like people are not academics, especially postdocs or PhD students because of the wage. It's because of the lifestyle. I love my job. I love the fact that I get to build my own schedule, show up when I want, do the research that I want, take breaks in the middle of the day to learn about philosophical things on YouTube. I can do that and then get back to doing chemistry. Like I am seriously living my dream life every single day that I wake up and I don't Take time to appreciate it enough because no matter what you're doing, if you actually think about it, you can probably think of some sort of positive aspect about your life, especially as a North American person. We were privileged to even have just been born in the country that we live in. And now for doing a postdoc, you don't necessarily need to stay within your exact field that you got your PhD because a PhD is really about learning. You learn all of these skills, you learn instrumentation, you learn methodologies. So then you can apply these rules to most fields within the scope of your knowledge. So I'm getting a PhD in nuclear chemistry, but at the end of the day, I'm getting a PhD in chemistry. So I could go work in most labs that have to do with chemistry. And one of my interests is actually crystallography. So if I were to switch fields and leave the radio pharmaceutical world for a little bit, I would definitely join a crystallography lab. There was actually a speaker that came from Cambridge to SFU a few weeks ago, and he spoke on order disorder frameworks, and I thought it was so cool. So I would definitely be interested in applying to a lab like that even. And at the end of the day, it will broaden my skill set even if I ended up going back to the radio pharmaceutical industry. Now going back to radio pharmaceuticals, one of the options as a radio chemist specifically is to go to industry and work for big pharma 
and or a small startup company where you would just develop radio pharmaceuticals and be a research and development scientist. And they actually make really good wages. Past three graduates from my lab all got hired, I think, at over 100K within their first year and they weren't even graduated from their PhD yet. Don't quote me exactly, but it was around 100K. One of the reasons why I am nervous about becoming an academic and or a little bit not excited is because I definitely, whoa, that is way too much highlighter. I hate politics. I hate kissing ass. I am terrible at networking. And you might be like, really? Yeah, I'm so bad at it. I get really nervous. I don't know what to say, who to talk to, and I'm really bad at making small talk with random people that I don't know. So I definitely struggle when I go to conferences. I find it very superficial and it gives me so much anxiety that I cry like every single day. I'm over exaggerating. Not every single day, but I cry a lot at conferences. They like really stress me out and going to conferences and communicating with other researchers in your field is a big component of academia. So if I want to stay in academia, I'm going to have to do that a lot. Is that something I want to do? I guess I gotta find out. But the part about conferences that I love is communicating science. I love communicating science. Whether it's online or at conferences, I love to talk about my work and science in general. So that component I love. The networking component I do not love as much. All right, I'm ready. And this brings me to the end of this video. Thanks for getting ready with me and talking a little bit about science and potential career opportunities with a PhD. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment box below. And if you made it this far, make sure to leave a like, comment, save, and or subscribe to my channel. It means the world to me, guys. Love you guys all so, so much. And I hope you have a great day or night, depending on when you're watching this. And like I always say, if you don't believe in yourself just yet, know that I believe in you. Have a great day.